the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, to Zion, to Zion. I'm Elder Rikoshia along with Elder Loya for your weekly Sabbath service. And, well, Sabbath, Sabbath class. And, of course, when the sun go down tonight, we will be in a new annual year according to the heavens. That's right. When the sun go down Saturday night, tonight, that brings in a new year. Okay, this is the real new year. Not the lion, Roman, evil, Saturnalia, uh, Babylonian new year. Where nothing grows from December 31st. Or nothing changes from December 31st to January 1st. The real new year. So let me say this in advance. Happy new year. Happy new New Year according to the heavens. All right. Happy New Year's. Now, before we go in, boy, do we have a lesson for you today. The truth about good and evil. There's a lot of information out there, but we're going to quantify that going into the next academy, which begins what? Which began uh, March 12th. Okay. So we want to quantify that and we're going to use this lesson to set it all up for what's to come. All right. 
the next Hebrew and Bible Academy. Happy New Year's to you all. Right. So the the concept that we that 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 we'll have for this Hebrew and Bible Academy is the battle between good and evil, light and darkness. Every lesson will have that concept. So I'm spearheading that particular academy with this lesson today. All right. Now, our Hebrew and Bible Academy will, will start March 12th. Uh, to enroll, go to historytimes.org. All right. All lessons in the upcoming academy will have an overall theme around spiritual warfare. Okay. Now, we talked about uh, the next academy after this. Uh, this academy theme will be the battle between good and evil, light and darkness, spiritual warfare. All 12 lessons will give you the spiritual view of that particular topic from the heavens. We have the earthy view and we have the heavenly view according to God and how all of it intertwines into what? An eventual prophecy that comes to a consummation, an end. An end for this world, a beginning for us. We also talk, we already have uh, the next concept of the next Hebrew and Bible Academy in the bag also. Yes, sir. All 12 weeks will be based off of what? Archaeology. History and archaeology will be the next academy where we'll give you empirical truth that, that cannot be disputed, archaeological proof of the Bible. From one lesson to the next, we'll prove according to modern day archaeology that, that the Bible is true and what? Everything we teach in this Bible has an archaeological backing. So now, not only do you have, you, we can prove the Bible and the truth of the Bible by our prophecies and who we are and, and the concepts that comes throughout precept, well, there's landmarks. There's archaeology, there's history in the old world that proves everything we're teaching is true according to God. So, yes, we're tightening up, making these lessons way more advanced than those that you've experienced in the past. So I hope you, you can join us for the next academy and even the academy after that. For the next six months is going to be just groundbreaking information from this church from our school, okay? Um, the, uh, the overall theme will be centered around spiritual warfare and how to battle against every, against evil. Every lesson will either be, have a brand new or updated spiritual warfare lesson, okay? Now, just go through this and I'll jump right into the, uh, the lesson, okay? The first lesson we'll go through in the Hebrew Bible Academy, as you all know, is the creation of the universe. But we'll update that. Okay? The state of the world before its physical and spiritual corruption. We're going to also have in this the promised seed, which will be an updated lesson. Showing you that there is a, there, there are true people according to the bloodline still existing in the earth. And we know exactly who these people are according to the Bible and I'm speaking of the chosen people. They have lied. Christianity have lied and made us believe that all things are equal. God loves everyone uh, evenly. There is no chosen people outside of Jewish people that they promote through Christianity. And guess what? It's all a lie. It's all a lie. The people who are suffering in this earth under Roman colonization and destruction are in fact the true children of Israel. And we're going to talk about that. Not to boast, but to bring clarity according to prophecy. If you don't know who the characters are of the Bible, who, who they are, how do you know, how, do you, how can you understand truly the prophecies of the book if you don't know the characters? So it's not about boasting, I'm the chosen people. No, it's about understanding prophecy to stand on the right side of prophecy before the end, all right? And once we understand all nations and who God's people are, 
everything else falls in place. The promised seed. We're going to highlight the Messiah who was born of the promised seed. And Christ was born to destroy the works of darkness. The or We're going to also have an updated lesson, the fall of Israel and Judah. How did our people fall from such a prominent position? From King Solomon, King David. Where did the kings go wrong? Well, we're going to talk about that. David to Solomon, the kingship, and how we slowly fell from grace. The origin of Israel's kingship. Israel's fall to idolatry, witchcraft, and the works of darkness. Also, a great brand new lesson that we're putting together here for you all, for the academy. The battle against witches and warlocks, a brand new lesson. How ancient witchcraft has been modernized and used as a weapon in our current times. How, how can we actually identify institutional listen to that word institutional witches and warlocks who have crept into our schools who have become ceos over companies how do, or over the medical apparatus how do you identify a witch or warlock right and now that we cannot actually withstand or actually stop them from gaining position how can we now use these institutions to our benefit without, without falling, falling for the craft, destruction, and death that comes with interacting with them? Because they made these institutions a necessity. With the earth getting poisoned, the majority of the people are sick. You need some of these institutions. But if you can identify the true origin of these witch doctors and understand the benefit of going into the institutions you'll know exactly how to say no to certain campaigns certain initiatives they have to continue to push death and sickness and speaking of death and sickness wait till you hear this lesson today the battle against witches and warlocks how ancient witchcraft has been modernized and used as a weapon in current times. Biblical principles on how to battle spiritually against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're going to also have a round table part two. The divide between man and woman. Okay, round table discussion. We're going to discuss various levels of social engineering and propaganda that has been used to separate and destroy family. To destroy family. We're going to talk about that and more. And we're going to highlight the evil. The evil propaganda. The evil religion. The mother of harlots. The Roman Catholic Church within this. But this time, not only will we talk about the Roman Catholic Church. This academy for the first time is going to concentrate on what? You got it. The black church. The black satanic church that spearheaded from Africa and America became the AME church. And we're going to show you witches and warlocks sprung from that particular organization. We're going to also talk about the rainbow gatekeepers that are over the black church. You don't want to miss the breakdown of modern Christianity in this academy. The black satanic rainbow mafia over the black church will be the concept. You're going to understand why, why people like Eddie Long was protected. Where, where, where there was a scenario where uh, Masonic Jews was wrapping Torah around a man who was accused of sexual acts with little boys in, in his congregation. Why were they protecting him? There's a mafia over the black church, and we're going to talk about that. 
the black church has become a political wing of the Democrat Party. It isn't anything religious at all. It's not don't have anything to do with Christ. It's a political wing of the Democrat Party, and I'm going to prove it. And not that the Republicans are any better. Let me make that clear also. Let me make that clear. Don't forget when they spearheaded that particular campaign a few years ago in 2020, it started, it started under the what? It started, it started under the power of Donald Trump. It started under his power. Right. He sat back as if nothing was going on, knowing exactly what was happening, knowing that our people would be targeted. So let me make it clear. When I say the evil and wicked Democrat Party, it's not, I'm not saying I'm a Republican. But it's clear, it's clear that one party is being promoted as the evil above the other. And what's bad about this is they're, they're attaching all that evil from the Democrat Party and using our people, the tribe of Judah, as the face of all evil by attaching us to the political agendas that we all know is immoral. So we're going to be talking about that and more in the next Hebrew Bible Academy. I hope you all join. Be a part of it. It's very inexpensive. And a matter of fact, what we're going to do is we'll give 10% off to all those who sponsor someone or refer someone. So if, if you get more people in to help us spread this word. And one thing about the Academy that's a little different than this particular platform is that we have an opportunity to sit down in a class setting to interact without trolls, without all these other things. And actually do what? Build God's people with, with the knowledge of the Bible. Build them. Okay? And snap people out of this trance that came from the evil theologian Jesuit schools. That have destroyed our people. Okay? We talk about the drugs in our neighborhood, but yet ignore the spiritual drug that have always destroyed us which allow everything else to come in. And the spiritual drug in our community is Christianity and Islam. We're the, we're the most spiritual people, but, but yet under, in the worst condition. That should tell you what? Our priesthood is famished. A neighborhood only in of itself or community is only as good as its priesthood. Those who claim to have the knowledge of God. Well, if you have the knowledge of God and have the priesthood, then your community should reflect your spirituality. And based on everything we're seeing in our neighborhoods, they're Satanist. They're Satanist over our community. They're Satanist. They're not priests. They're not pastors. They're Satanist. Why? The community reflects its priesthood. So that's why the academy is so important. That's why these lessons we're doing are so important. It's to break our people from what? From their psychosis, from their sleep, to understand what's really going on prophetically according to God. And, and through that, we can now stand on the right side of prophecy. No longer confused. No longer confused. Why? And Christ even told you, if the blind lead of the blind, you shall both fall in a ditch. So if you continue to follow these churches and pastors who are blind, guess what? It's no fault outside of your own. Especially when the truth is here. And Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want to see you all in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Go to historytimes.org. Now, Elder Lawyer. Let's start. Yes, sir. The truth about good and evil. Shemai Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Hayanawa Ahaya Akad. Shemai Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Hayanawa Ahaya Akad. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Now, what you've seen there, brothers and sisters, for all of you who are fairly new, you notice when we spoke the Hebrew credo from Deuteronomy, when we spoke that in Hebrew, afterward, elder interpreted. So if you're going to speak in another tongue or a foreign tongue, you have to tell those who are actually listening the interpretation in a language they can understand in order to edify. Folks, that's what Paul was talking about in the book of Corinthians. You can't speak in an unknown tongue and no one in the room understands it. Okay? That's babble. That's sin. That's satanic. That's channeling. And I'm saying that personally coming up from a Christian church where you had people falling out all over the place. How many, 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 and all this crap they're doing in there without anyone looking around saying, hold up, what is this person saying? Being ruled by your emotions, channeling demons. And I'm going to be going into that in the, I'm going to tell you, when I go into the black church, I'm going to be talking about that. That's nonsense. If you speak in a different language, like we did in Hebrew, Shemaya, Sha'ala, Ahaya, Alahaya, Ahaya, Akkad, we are to tell you exactly what's being said in English. Why? Because if God is speaking to you, shouldn't everyone in the room know what, know what he's talking about? So, so, so Christian churches, they love to run with this speaking in tongues thing. But, but it's foolishness. Speaking in tongues isn't what we see in the Christian church. Christ and the disciples, there's no example of any of that happening. If you were to put that up against what the disciples and Christ were doing. There's no example of them falling out, spinning, rolling around and spitting, screaming, and, you know, just tripping in an unknown tongue. That's evil. All right. So I wanted to put that out to, there, too, because speaking in tongues will also be a highlight in that lesson we're going into with the foolishness within the black churches today. Now, let's go. Let's go. All right. The truth about good and evil. There's many concepts out there. The Bible gives us a moral line concerning what's right or what's wrong, which is the importance of God's law. But I want to deal with this from a higher level today, a spiritual level. Also, I'm going to go into why governments and even under certain sects of Judaism, sin is promoted. See, everyone talks about the Torah Orthodox Jews as if they are the example of, 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 of one ideology or, or one concept or understanding. When really there's many sects within Judaism or the Jewish religion. And I'm not, not going to highlight that more so because I'm going to pull out a piece on that. But in this lesson, I hope to give brothers and sisters an understanding of why things are in the earth. Why is evil allowed through government, religious institutions? Who's actually in power over the evil? And who, worship the, who worships that power? And how do we escape the evil that have now overtaken the world? Well, I hope you get full understanding in, in this lesson. The truth about good and evil. I believe this lesson will be one that many will go back to over and over and over again, you know, to actually stay grounded in understanding the battle between two forces. Okay, and how there's a thin line in between the two. All right, now before I go into that, please hit the like button. We have 1,700 people in, almost 2,000. Please hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. At least hit the like button for us. Please. Yes. And as you file in, hit the like button. Now, 
first and foremost, what we want to show you here is tonight begins a new year. A new year according to the heavens. On your screen right here, and a matter of fact, this particular, uh, Elder Lawyer, pass me that calendar under, over there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. This particular chart you see before you, this particular chart is in this. I took a picture out of this calendar. Run the race. Make sure you go to gatheringofchrist.org to get this calendar. Right? In this particular calendar, it gives you a chart of how time is actually calculated. Every year ends in a Sabbath. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown begins what? That's the last day of the year. Every year ends Friday sundown, Saturday sundown, equal parts night and day. And then what happens? A new year begins. Saturday sundown on to Sunday sundown, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you have 52 weeks and that makes a calendar year according to the heavens. So what do we do? We put together a chart so you can understand how true time is calculated. Okay, new moon or new month brings in a spring. You got 30 days of the spring, 30 days. 30 days, which are 90 days, or 31 days, and that brings in what? The summer. 30, 30, 31, and that brings in what? The autumn. 30, 30, 31, which is the intercalary day, and that brings in what? Winter. And then it's 30, 30, 31, which is the intercalary day. All right? And that brings in a new year. 52 weeks, 52 Sabbaths, makes up a calendar year according to God. That's how the Bible calculates it. When it says moon, it's not talking about the moon and the sky. That moon means month. It's an entirely different word than the, than the word or the greater light or the lesser light called the moon. It's month. Okay? So I wanted y'all to look at this and understand that it's Bible prophecy that our people get back, get back on time. Because the Romans would seek to do what? Change. Let's get that, Elder Lawyer, in Daniel 7 and 25. He would think to change times and laws. Now, what's great about the calendar we have here, you can go to gatherofchrist.org to get this, is that it's a regular calendar, but it shows you when God's holy days and Sabbaths actually falls in within each month that you may call March, April, or whatever the case is. All right. It shows you with a regular calendar format how the holy days fall in from March to March. You can use it as a regular calendar, but you'll also know when God's days are there. Sabbaths. Holy Days, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Passover, in a nutshell, it, it's quite simple. From this point right here, springtime, right? You count two weeks, 14 days, and you have what? Passover. So every year, the Passover falls on what? You got it, a Sabbath. It's quite that simple. The Passover falls on Sabbath, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown every year. 14 days of the new of, of the month. You notice that when you look at the Jewish calendars, 
every year their Passover falls on a different day of the week. You know why? Because it tell you in the book of Jubilees why. And we're going to go over that and then we're going to go into the lesson. Read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. This is Daniel 7, verse number 25. Come on. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And think to change times and laws. Now, can he really change time? The Romans, the Edomites, Gregorian, Julian, and all that. No, they can't change times because time was created before earth. Time comes from the heavens. So they will confuse the people on earth concerning the times. See? They would think to change times and laws, but they can't change nothing. Time is still ticking down on the devil according to the heavenly calendar. And that's what you see before you. The constellations, the stars, which are angels, confirm everything we have in front of you. They come out during the spring and there's a certain thing in the constellation to let you know, okay, springtime comes, eventually we're going to start to plant, right? And then the constellations come at another time to let us know a new season is coming in. It marks every, everything we're seeing in front of you marks what the heavens confirm. All right. Everything you see before you. <laughs> and look what we did. We put it in the calendar. Let me show you. We put it in the calendar. It's right there. <laughs> see, the Bible tell you that you're supposed to calculate a year 364 days. Let's get that and then we'll jump into the lesson of the way. Yes, sir. The book of Jubilees. You have it in front of you? That's yes, it's 6 and 23, right? Yes, sir. Jubilees 6 and 23. Thank you. Please hit the like button. Right, Jubilee 6 and 23. Let's start at 22. Yes, sir. Yeah. 22. For I have it written in the book of the first law, and that which I have written for thee, that thou shouldest celebrate it in its seasons, one day in the year, and I explain to thee its sacrifices, that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day and every year. Now, people might ask, well, hold up. What is the book of Jubilees? Well, it tell you in Second Edris, it tell you in Edris, that this is the secret of the times that was shown to Moses. Okay, the secret of the times, and he told he told Moses to hide some information, which is what we're reading, and only the elders would actually dove into this, and then publish the rest, which are the five books of Moses written of in the Bible. Okay, come on, twenty three. And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month, are the days of remembrance, and the days of the seasons, and the four divisions of the year. The four divisions of the year, and that's why you see the divisions here. So according to God, you have four divisions on earth. All right? Read. These are written and ordained. As a testimony forever. For, for how long? Forever. Forever. So what we're doing according to the Most High is putting the world, our people in particular first, back on time. Back on the time before the Babylonians begin to distort things by us, by have, teaching us to follow the moon. The moon in the sky. When the moon comes up 10 days early each year. So if you calculate a year according to the moon, eventually you're going to be out of time with the heavens. And what happens? You're going to begin to follow holy days on different days of the year outside of the heavens. God and the at the heavenly table, the heavenly tabernacle in heaven, the angels and all are still dealing with these holy days at a fixed time like it was instituted during the time of Moses and even before him. So if you start following the moon only, that's the Jewish people 
what happens is it throws off time and we'll be doing a Passover at a time when nothing is going on in the heavens. See? Read, the heavens will not confirm or acknowledge that particular time. Read. 24. And Noah ordained them for himself as feast for the generations forever, so that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. And on the new moon of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. So the first month, he was bidden to make for him an ark, read. And on that day, the earth became dry, and he opened the ark and saw the earth. Now, I need you to go to where it says 364 days only. Yes, sir. Let's go uh, straight to it. 32. Let's go to 32. Yes, sir. Right here. And he commanded the children of Israel. Jubilee 6 and 32. Come on. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning. 364 days. How many days? 364 days. A real year is 364 days. Don't believe the lie they're putting out there with the leap year and all this other crap because they can't follow because they refuse to follow the God of Israel. The reason why they got to put a leap year and take things away and try to recalculate everything is because they refuse to follow the Sabbaths. From Sabbath to Sabbath, it gives you what? 52 Sabbaths. Five and two, seven. Complete year. There is no three quarters in percentages and all this other mess they're talking about. Read. And these will constitute a complete year. Come on. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feast. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day, nor disturb any feast. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, Come on. Then they will, uh, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from this order, and they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. And they will neglect the ordinances that were given from the heavens, through our God, the God of Israel, the God who sent Christ. See? So what did the Babylonians do? And later, the Romans and others, the Greeks, they started dealing with strictly the moon, the crescent moon, the throw off time. Now it tells us that the, the error would be, it was shown Moses, the error would be that our people would begin to acknowledge the moon to calculate time. Let's read it. 36. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Observations of the moon, not realizing the moon followed the sun through portal. The moon follows the sun. Okay? So there's a solar time. The solar time is 364 according to the heavens. The moon is the lesser light. That's doing what? That's the evil governments of Babylon exalting the feminine over the masculine and by doing so, throwing time off course. The same way they're looking to throw things off course in earth by having the man follow the woman. And this is why the whole earth is out of course. So if you focus on the moon only, understand you lose track of time. It's going to tell you. Read. For there will be those who will shortly make observations of the moon. Come on. How it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year. Ten days too soon. So the Most High Ahia told Moses, tell them never follow the moon only. Because the moon cycle for a year comes in ten days early. You got six months that have 30 days and six months with 29 days under the moon cycle. That's 354 days. So if you use that as a new year, you got to recalculate the holy days every year. When the Most High said what? The holy days come in a fixed time, comes in at a fixed time each year. Which means if you're, 
If your Passover is on the Sabbath this year, it will be on the Sabbath next year. Because the earth has a cycle of seven what? Seven, 52 times before a new year. So if, if a holy day falls on one day this year, it's going to be on the same day next year. But if you're dealing with the moon, this year the Passover is going to be on a Wednesday. Next year the Passover is going to be on a Saturday or something. Ridiculous. I thank the Most High he gave us this information to get back on time. And through that, we found we're very close to, to the correct time before the consummation. And this is why Paul said it's high time we awake out of sleep. You have to know what time it is. Now, why would the evil people uh, think to change times and laws? So that we'll get thrown off concerning prophecy. See, this was their plan. Evil. Read. Well, there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Come on. How it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, ten days too soon. Come on. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony. They will make an abominable day the day of testimony. So a day that, that the most high said celebrate. It'll be a day where something evil is going on or an evil day that have nothing to do with God, like your pagan holidays today. See? No one is, is on course with the heavens. The Vatican's, they aren't. Neither are the Muslims or the Buddhists or the Hindus. It was upon the children of Israel, God's people. It was upon our, our forefathers. It was upon us to sustain time according to the beginning, according to the heavens. But we fell. We fell as a people and the whole earth went out of course and lost time. And, and don't forget, Ham, Shem, and Japheth were, was on the ark, Noah's ark. And when you look at time calendars from the children of Ham, Shem, and Japheth right now, none of them own the same time. We're in year 5,000 on here, a uh, year of a monkey over there in China. I don't know what the Hades they're dealing with. And here it is. We were all under one time under Noah. You got the Ethiopian calendar, the Coptic calendar, the Gregorian calendar. No one is on time. But the Most High sent his word. He sent his word, and he usually does this before the end, to give everybody an opportunity to fall back in order before judgment. See? Come on, other lawyer. It says, And they will confound all the days and the holy with the unclean, and an unclean day of... Well, it says here. Uh, and make an abominable day the day of testimony, and an unclean day of feast day, and they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Look at that. Come on. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason they will go wrong as to the new months and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. Look at that. Our people will go off and begin to follow the ways of the Gentiles. This is why they took this time from the world. You think the enemy don't know that this time is correct according to the heavens? But it's not upon them to teach. It's not on them to teach you the truth. Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He would bring the truth to those what? who was willing to receive it in the end days to stand as the children of God. And guess what? All praises be to the Most High. Here we are. Here we are proclaiming the truth that was hidden. Now, jumping right into this, the truth about good and evil. We're going to go into that today. So we can understand why everything is. 
How is it that governments, religions, and all that allow evil to fester? It seems as the it seems as if the more spiritual we become, the more evil the earth becomes. Why so? Who's in control of all this evil? And how do we oppose this in the last days and stand unscathed? Well, in order to do so, a, a lesson on light and darkness, let's go to the Garden of Eden. Let's go to the Garden of Eden. We're going to go back to the book of Jubilees. Hold Jubilees 10 for me here. Right? But let's go to the garden. That tree of good and evil. We're going to Genesis 3. Right? And these lessons are just a precursor. It's just the beginning into our new concept going into the academy next academy, March 12th. The concept is going to be light, darkness. A full understanding on both. To understand the workers of light against the workers of darkness. Total concept. So I believe this lesson will is, is, is perfect. And spearheading that particular concept we'll be going into for three full months with each lesson. Let's go into the tree of good and evil. Yes, sir. Let's go straight to Elder Lawyer. Let's, let's start at the first verse. That's fine. Uh, Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now when it says the serpent, those in the academy who were in the prior academy understand it. It's not talking about just a snake slithering on the ground. Even though the angels have the power to shape shift. This, go, this comes from the, the, the Hebrew word seraph. You have cherubim and seraphim. Ranking angels. Who fell to this realm. So when you see the word serpent. It's deeper than just a snake sn s s slithering around. It comes from the angelic term. Cherub. Next stage, well, the seraph and the cherub. It's speaking of a fallen angel. Okay, read. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Come on. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And our God said, don't touch it. Why? He didn't plant the tree. See, a lot of Christians don't even realize they're confused with this concept. In Genesis 1, when the Most High made what? The fruits, the trees, and all to be eaten. He said that that, that, that was good, and he saw that it was good. So if, if Genesis 1 tells us that everything he made was good, where did an evil tree come from? <laughs> Surely the Most High would not have planted that tree. Okay? Surely he would not have. There was something, some other beings here who fell and began to watch Adam in order to take his power. His power was to have dominion and influence over the earth. So in order for them to gain power, those that were here, came out of the ice. They came out of the ice. They were here, concealed in ice. Eventually, they came out of the ice, viewed Adam, and coveted the power given to him from heaven. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to be going into that in a couple of weeks. So surely... Adam and Eve had what? Nemesis on earth. There were no other people. 
So here it is. God said, don't touch it. Why? Because the Most High didn't plant it. He made the herbs to heal man. He didn't make any poisons that can destroy man. So someone else planted this tree. Could it be the serpent? The cherub that falleth? Hmm. I wonder. So our God said, don't touch the tree. Because he didn't plant it. He have never tempted man to do evil. And this concept isn't taught in Christian church. A matter of fact, without teaching it correctly, it would have Christians and others question why God would actually have it there. Why would he plant a tree knowing that man could fall? And, and guess what? Through that, unbelief begins. We begin to blame God for something he never did. See? And that, that's the confusion in Christianity. They don't tell people that, it, that, that no, that wasn't God's tree. That was the devil's tree. And that's why I want to go into this concept, the truth about good and evil. Because they've allowed the, the evil theologians to lie on our God. The evil Bible teachers to lie on our God and have, our, and have people question. Question the righteousness. And not only the righteousness, but the piety of our God. See? Why would God put that there? He didn't put it there. He made it clear not to touch it. Okay? Read on. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, or ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods, a concept from the beginning. Gods are powers and or angels. See? So now, what is he doing here? And this is no slight on any people out here, folks. Let me make it clear. We're putting things in order. The Bible has a patriarchal concept for a reason. Because the masculine was first. Out came the Holy Spirit and life came through. So that concept of a patriarchal power stands in the heavens. So here it is. This is the serpent, the fallen one, seeking to educate the woman above the knowledge that was given to Adam. It's not that Adam would, it not, it's not that Adam uh, would one day, it's not as if he would, wouldn't one day receive this information. It isn't as if the Most High is going to uh, uh, hold this information from Adam. Okay? But there's a time for everything. So now, the serpent is seeking to do what? Circumvent the man's power by giving her knowledge before he receives understanding. See? Throwing everything off balance. He's seeking to educate the woman. To use that education or that knowledge as leverage against who? God's dominion on earth. This is how she could he could circumvent the man. By giving her more knowledge than him at that time. I need y'all to check this out. See, listen, I love education. I'm educated. I don't have no problem with education and knowledge. But we have to realize when it's being used as a tool to circumvent God's order. So now if you know so much and understanding, now by default, you become the head. 
You become the head and begin to lead what? Lead us where? And that's what we're talking about here. Good and evil. Everything that's set up, the institutions and all that today, folks, was set up with the concept that circumvented God's dominion given to man. The way they set up schools, everything. And I don't want to harp on this too long. People knew from the beginning of time that men, own men, the male, only excel in what they're interested in. We were never supposed to, as, a, as males, we were never supposed to grow or learn under a linear educational system. It bores us. We're hands-on. Linear understanding to obtain knowledge linear in the past test is how women excel, not men. Because linear builds workers. An interest or an idea builds bosses. See? <laughs> an idea builds a person who can exercise and cultivate his idea is the boss. A linear learner is only learning to work. So this is why they did what? They put men in a linear educational system so that women can now compete. Because now the man have to lower his way of learning to learn like her. Now there's studies on this and all that. Now you can have a man with no education at all like your Bill Gates. Like your Don Kings. Like your Kanye West, who actually dropped out and didn't finish school. See? And their ideas alone will excel them above the so-called educated. See? I wanted to put that out there real quick. So let's talk about this tree. Satan had a plan of taking the man's dominion by what? circumventing the one he loves or trusts and use, use the woman as proxy to steal power. Now the power is not going to go to her because Satan is looking to destroy both of you, Adam and Eve. And I'm going to be talking about that in the garden. He don't care about a woman standing and saying, I got this and I got that. That's only good to brag amongst your peers. He's looking to destroy you without protection. That's his plan. His plan is to have the woman frustrate the man so, so much that her protection, her hedge, runs from her. And now she's exposed to the serpent to be utterly eradicated with her children. I'm going to be talking about that. But let's go into this tree. Genesis 6, 3 and 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof. She took of the fruit. Her husband told her not to take the fruit. But her curiosity for power couldn't stop her. It was that curious nature to know, to get, to get some information. And it opened up what they call, in Hindu religion, the chakra. The chakra isn't a righteous concept. And I'm going to, I'm, we're talking about that too. It opens you up to the dark world of those who were here, who came out of the darkness and began to rule once Adam fell. So he says, you shall be like gods, understanding both good and evil. So what was the education here? Gods are angels. Don't you want to know what happened? How we all got here, Eve? 
I'm going to give you the knowledge of it all. What happened up there? How did we get here? What's going to happen within the earth? See? Now, now, Eve and Adam is going to who? They're going to Satan's church now. Because guess what? Satan is not just going to give them evil things. He's going to tell them some good things. Some beneficial information was on the tree too. But now you're going to Satan's church. See? Now, when, now, now check this out. By doing so, they lost dominion over the earth. And that's when Satan and the fallen ones gained full power. And began to set up constructs to oppose our people. Starting from the children of Seth. Against the children of Cain. All the way up in Babylon when Nimrod was going against our father Abraham. They had the good and evil concepts to oppose the righteousness that comes, from, comes through the word of God. Each civilization would be set up to oppose what was written in this book. The Bible gives us back our dominion, folks, that Adam lost. And through that, what a balance. We began to do what, brothers and sisters? Bring the earth back into righteousness. This is why they have done what? This is why the evildoers, I'm going to go into it, have stepped on the, on the gas in promoting evil. Our people coming to the truth has made an imbalance in the earth. Because the earth must now do what? Respond to her children. If we're coming back as Israel, the earth must respond to this. So now the righteousness has begun to rise and the evil have come to the forefront and began to step on the pedal. Step on the gas. Listen to what I'm showing you here. Now, going into this tree of good and evil, because Adam and Eve did this, Job 9 and 24 real quick. Job. And, folks, and I'm going to tell you, this is why the world doesn't tell us how important we are, too. And I really need y'all to think about that. They don't tell us how important we are. And it's inten that's intentional. Because the whole earth responds to her children, especially Jerusalem. It tells you that in the Bible, that Jerusalem longs for her children. So as we come back to the knowledge, the same, we're actually doing what? We're counteracting what happened in the Garden of Eden. And the earth is responding. So the evildoers must come behind the curtains and step on the gas to promote sin. They must do it. And I'm going to show you there's a concept amongst the Kabbalists in Judaism. I'm going to bring that out. Now, I got more details as we go into the academy as far as putting this down from a school standpoint. But I needed to give you all insight on some of the depth that we teach in our Hebrew and Bible Academy, folks. It's a lot of depth that, connect, that will connect the dots for you. And you cannot find that information and to understand it simply as you would in, in compared, you know, as you would in the, in the academy. Job 9 and 24. Hit the like button for us, please. Yes, sir. Job 9 and 24. Read. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So when Adam fell, Satan got power for a time. For the course of this earth, he would have 6,000 years from Adam's fall to rule the darkness or the fallen within the earth under a ranking order. If angels fall, they fall under who? Samuel, Satan, the devil, whatever you would like to call him. They fall under his authority. See? Now, there's rules of engagement. 
the rules of engagement is he can only behold the righteousness of the children of light and cannot touch. The only way he can touch the children of light, the only way is if they succumb to sin and turn to the dark side and then they will fall under his rank and order to be attacked. That's the only way he have power against the children of light. The only power Satan has is the power the righteous, the righteous people gives him by falling to sin. Hence the reason why the Christian church is teaching you the law is done away with. That you're no longer under the law, you're under grace. They want you to, they want you to sin on purpose to have power over you, to rule you from the dark side. We shouldn't be teaching grace. We should be teaching the law and let people know the grace of God what? Who have grace on us even while making mistakes. That through Christ's blood, he covered us and gave us another opportunity to get it right under the grace period. That's how grace should be taught. It shouldn't be taught that grace replaced the law. See, it should have never been taught that grace replaces the law. Because when you're no longer under the law, yes, you're under grace, but it gives you an opportunity to repent, not to sin over and over and over again. Expecting Christ to cover that what? Willful sin. They're teaching this in the Christian church and others. Why? So that you can be subjected to the God's of darkness. Your family becomes susceptible. Now they can attack you and your family because you're sinning against God's law. See? Let's read that again, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So there is no righteous judgment, judges in the earth, because Satan if Satan have actually put up compromised judges that would do his will on earth, opposed to the righteous judgments, judges who were once under Israel. There is no equi equity or righteousness in our, in our realm anymore. You can grab a chair, uh, Yahweh. Read on. If not, where and who is he? Now, what I'm about to go into now, fast tracking things. We're in Genesis. We're going all the way to Revelation. You can just move whatever you can out of the way. Don't worry about that. Any place you would like. Just move that stuff out of the way. It doesn't matter. Thank you. One second, folks. We're going all the way to the book of, uh, of Revelation. Hold Revelation 9. And we're going to go to a few verses in Job in a moment. Hold, hold that and get Job 26. Right? Yes, sir. And I need you to hold that. And I need you to, in the Bible, get Genesis 6 and 1. Let's read Genesis 6 and 1 first. Yes, sir. Genesis 6 and 1. Read it. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Come on. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. The sons of God are angels, folks. Ministering angels of the heavens. Watchers. They saw, the sons of God saw the daughters of women, uh, daughters of men that they were fair. 
These were the daughters of Cain in the evil city of Nod. Ritual, ritualistic sexual activity, concupiscence, spiritual with what? You got it. Man or woman or the blood of man. This is what happened, folks, whether you want to believe it or not, folks. What we see in Greek mythology and all that isn't mythology at all. They call them many things on earth. Aliens, the gods. I mean, you can even find this in, in, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Samaritan text. Everything we're teaching here is confirmed in archaeology within Babylon. Gods came down. And any, anyone falls will fall under the rank and order of Samuel, whom the Jewish people know him as. They don't see him as a uh, what you would call evil entity at all. They see him as an entity that's used for God's will on earth. Okay? This is how, and I'm going to prove that. They don't, they, they don't see Satan or Samuel as evil. And you know why? Because under the Jewish, under the Jewish ideology, under Judaism, Samuel is the God over the Romans. This is why they, they don't put him out as anything evil. They see him as a necessary evil. To do what? So that they can uphold their power. Because if their power is one with Samuel or Satan, they'll rule as long as he's in power. Now they see the God of our Bible as an enemy. They see Christ as an enemy. Why? Because Christ was prophesied to bound the God they serve. And guess what? I have no problem with who they serve. Why? Because even Christ said, either be hot or cold or be spewed out of the mouth. At least they're willing to admit who to the public exactly the God they serve. And that must be respected. See? We're breaking it down for you today, folks. It's my position, understanding the God they serve and who they are, to stay out of their to, st to stand out of their way, and let them do their will according to prophecy, knowing their end. Why? It's set, It's written in the heavens that they are not written in the book of life. If you reject Christ, it tells us in the New Testament, you are dead already. See, I'm going to break it all down and not with my personal opinion. I have resources here today. I'm going to show you how the, the medical apparatus works. All of that. Everything works. It's written up in scripture. Why is it every other second on commercials, you hear about another pharmaceutical or this, that, and the other? Do you have pain? Do you have hurt? Uh, do you have uh, stomach cramps? Uh, do you have this? Why don't you take this or that? Folks, y'all didn't even know all of this is written in scripture. I'm going to show you. In this, the truth about good and evil. Right? We're going to talk about it today. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, when it says, Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years, most people believed, brothers and sisters, that this was talking about life expectancy. 
when people live well past 120 years at, before this time and after that time. It's talking about a time, a time span of jubilees before judgment. You cannot find this anywhere on the earth, what I'm telling you right now. You can't find it in Christianity. You can't find it in Islam. You can't find it nowhere. It's hidden in the word. A jubilee is 50 years. 120 times 50 is 6,000 years. That's right, 6,000. The mark of a man, six. Satan has, has 6,000 years to rule the dark side up until judgment. And he, and he knows this. The days are days of jubilees. 6,000 years he would have. That's right, folks. 6,000. 2,500 years from what? 2,500 from Adam to Moses receiving the law. 1,750 years from Moses receiving the law to Christ's birth. And another 1,750 years from Christ's birth to Christ's coming. That's the correct breakdown. We're not in the year 2023. They should think to change times and laws. If you missed earlier, when it comes to the time, look back at the, at, at, at the beginning of this lesson and you'll understand exactly what we're talking about. Read on. Four. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. There were giants, Nephilim. All the children as a product of this disobedience, what, 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 who are in the earth, being born in the earth, are now subjected to what? The dark side order. Soldiers, children born in the earth that are automatically under Satan's ranks that he could use against the righteous. Nephilim. Now suppose science could actually, brothers and sisters, mimic this genetic pattern through science and begin to turn people by changing genetics into the same bloodline of Nephilim. Suppose something happens where you get something in you and your genetics begin to change. You think you're being changed into something new? Huh? You think you're being changed into something new? Not at all. These are ancient codes to change the genetics of people to Nephilim in order to cut off the original bloodline that came from Adam. Why? Adam's bloodline was meant to rule. One day, that's right, the same people that came through Adam, uh, Seth, Shem, the children of Israel, will one day regain the authority lost by our father Adam. So Satan can hit you off at the past with some chemicals that can begin to change your genetics and automatically initiate you into his army against the light. You have something other lawyer? No, sir. And that leads us to the book of Revelation. Before you go there, <laughs> there's so many things here. <laughs> I'm going to hit them all, all off here. Before you go there, Elder Lawyer, let's go to Matthew 16 and 13. Yes, sir. Say Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13. 
when Yeshaya came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. When it says Caesarea Philippi, folks, Caesarea Philippi is a gate that leads into Mount Hermon near Syria. Well, it so happened in Genesis 6 when it says the sons of God came down to deal with the daughters of men. Well, it so happens, brothers and sisters, Christ is standing at the same mount where the angels came down. He's right there with Peter. The same mount, paramount, paramount. Y'all seen the Hollywood pictures where the stars float and go around the mountain? Hollywood, paramount. They're letting you know that this is the knowledge that they have given the witches and warlocks there in Hollywood to progress Satan's agenda, to have us all participate in their ritual against righteousness. By programming the people into accepting sin, evil, death, unrighteousness. So now Christ is standing at that same mount where the angels came down, Mount Hermon. And it so happens the day the UN actually have a base at the top of this same mountain where the angels came down. And, and guess what? I'm going to show proof of that too. In our 12 weeks, the light against darkness. I'm going to show that in the 12 weeks. I'm gonna, you're going to see it yourself. The UN, the United Nations have a base where the angels came down. At the top of the same mountain, the entry. And I'm going to show you how Christ, the light side of all of this, our Savior, how he was able to tie all this in to why he would eventually give what? The gospel, the light, the truth to the children of Israel. He was telling us there's a battle, an unseen battle where, that, that's waged against us, unbeknownst to ourselves. So he, he went to Peter here at Caesarea Philippi, the gate that leads to Mount Hermon where the angels came down in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Come on. When Yeshua came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Come on. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? But who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are the first begotten of the father. You are, you are the most high's first first life out of creation. Read. 17. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And also I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church. Upon your rock, upon you, Peter, will I build this church. I'm giving you the true doctrine. I'm going to give you the doctrine that will one day battle against the forces of evil that came, that came out of heaven onto this mountain. I'm going to give you the knowledge to withstand the darkness, the principalities and powers, the workers of evil that stand in dark places. I'll give you the knowledge on how to defeat them. How to wage spiritual warfare. Read. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the what? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. I need y'all to hold that and think about that real quick as we go to the book of Revelation. There's gates, portals that lead into this realm from hell. So Christ said, is letting, is, is telling the disciples right there. Sooner or later, the God of this world will do what? Have the power to control what's released out of hell.
Now, when this happens, total chaos and mayhem will ensue on earth. Something is coming out of hell. And I'm going to give you the knowledge to withstand this. Because what, what, why? It was prophesied. There's no stop in it. So who will live through the chaos? Who will live through the mayhem that's coming out of this gate? Those who have the doctrine received through Peter. Because you have to realize, fighting against the evil forces isn't some hocus pocus. It, it isn't some Harry Potter type of deal. Fighting is also understanding what not to do. Navigating around Satan's initiatives, understanding God's law. And what I've learned, Christ made it simple for me. He taught the disciples. He, he spent, he poured everything into them to be able to withstand the darkness during their time. And so Christ is simple. He says, listen, I'm going to help you navigate through all of this. Let your yea be yea. And let your nay be nay. Anything else gendereth what? Strife and contention. So my thing is, anything coming out of that dark hole sold to the population as good, my answer, according to Christ's command, is no. The gates of hell cannot prevail against me because they're going to package their darkness as light. Let's get that, Elder Lawyer. Everything coming out of the gates of hell, they're going to package it as if Christ said it. See? Anything coming out of that dark hole Peter and those who understand the doctrine would say, hell to the no. That's another way of waging warfare, folks. Is a such thing as defense. You don't have to be on the offense all the time, but you have to know how to weave it. Get out of the way of it. Have other people volunteer and run in front of you to get it. But like, listen, I told you, stand behind me. We're... Our answer, according to Christ, is no. Anything else, gender strife. I don't have to, I won't have any regrets for saying no. So it's Satan's power, part of his sleight of hand, sleight of horn and tail, is to do what? Is to confuse the people into making the wrong choice. So my answer, according to Christ, is let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. No. Anything coming out of that dark hole, and I'm going to show you what's coming out of what? The gates of hell today. And the answer is no. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians 11 and 13. Hold up. We're about a thousand likes down, folks. If you just come and hit the like button, please help us out here. You know, we're, we're being shadow banned. It's your help by hitting the like button that show others we're actually broadcasting. So help us with that, okay? Let's read it. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians 11 and 13. Come on. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So Satan himself repackaged himself on earth as who? Christ, the good guy. So Satan did what? Transform himself into the angel of light. But, they, but you, you must watch his words. Because it tells us in the epistles... 
when they shall say safety and peace or peace, peace, sudden destruction comes on the people. So if they out there telling you with his ministers, it's safe, it's safe. I, we, we're doing this for peace or safety. They're planning to kill and destroy. Those are their code words. It's safe. We're going, how, how can you sell peace through war? <laughs> I need y'all to think about that. Well, 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 I'll tell you what. America is going into the Middle East to do some peacekeeping exercises. The UN is going into Africa to do some peacekeeping exercises. Well, why do they need the military to do peacekeeping exercises? So everything they say is the reverse if you're under crisis knowing, according to what was delivered to the disciples. Everything they say, it's in the reverse. See? Satan himself appears as an angel of light. So when he say peace and safety, it tells us that. Let's read that, Elder Lord. Let's get that since they, so they can have that precept too. Yes, sir. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. First of all, the evil will appear as light or good. Now, we're going to show you in our lesson in the academy, witches and warlocks, how to identify them. And not just the everyday uh, hustlers that's in our neighborhoods. Okay? From an academia standpoint, from a professional standpoint, a medical standpoint, how do you identify a witch or a warlock? You'll see in a few weeks. Read it. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. Come on. For when they shall say peace and safety. So when they shall say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Sudden destruction cometh upon them. Because why? You were tricked. So the, the Bible are giving us the cheat codes for life and how to withstand the darkness, folks. When it comes to the initiatives against our people. So the Bible is telling us every time you hear them say peace and safety, avoid them. Read it again, chapter and verse. First Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they shall say peace and safety. Hold up, it's safe. Listen, if it's safe, you don't have to continually convince me of it. See? Anytime somebody every, every other minute telling me, oh, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe. You know what? That's telling me outright, any of us, we need to be skeptical of this. And see, I give you all the position to be skeptical. Because I'm not skeptical at all. My answer is no. Every time they say peace or safety or something is safe, Christ told me to say no according to the word. See, that's, and, and get, I'll put it right out there. That's my religious right. If you want to put it that way, if you want to understand it that way. That when you say peace and safety, there's a law that Christ gave me to say no. Read. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. That's, that's a code word for now. You have volunteered for your own sickness and or death. You volunteered for it. You open yourself up to the dark side. See? It's an, it's, it's an old uh, vampire uh, uh, adage. Okay? That the vampire cannot come in unless you let the vampire in. See? Read. Then, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And they shall not escape. You listen to these people if you want, these workers of darkness. Now let's go to the book of Revelation now, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. 
Now, who was bound in hell? In Peter's, it tell you the angels that sin. Let's get that real quick. Second Peter chapter two, verse four. Yes, sir. Second Peter two, verse number four. Mm -hmm. For if God spared not the angels that sin. Now we know what happened in the beginning. If God spared not the angels that sin, when the sons of God came and dealt with the daughters of men and seen that they were fair, what happened to them? Well, they brought forth Nephilim on earth. And then after that, Hence the reason why, why when Joshua and Caleb sent spies into Canaan, they seen these big beings who dwarfed the spies almost as if they were grasshoppers. So that's why it says, and after that, that they would, re, they would be reborn on earth, Goliath and all of them. Now, through their science, they have made it where they can actually operate at a smaller stature Amongst the population without you seeing them as Nephilim. And hence the reason why. Right. Allegedly. Through all their science. Some have come out having what they would call Down syndrome or some type of birth defect and all that. But you don't even realize a lot of this stuff came from genetic testing so that they can allow Nephilim to walk amongst our society without being recognized. Okay? Foil laboratory work have led to genetic uh, 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 inconsistency, so to speak. So they've been testing for years on how to allow these beings to operate amongst people. Okay? And folks, why do you think out of nowhere they, they want us to accept everything outside of male and female and are confusing people with pronouns and all that? Who's trying to now come from behind the curtains to be accepted as something different or a freak? It has nothing to do with what they're promoting, folks. It's the Nephilim coming out into plain sight. And if they can muddy the waters with all of these different pronouns and different types of people... Now that they can, these, now these Nephilim can now operate freely in our society as politicians, as others like they were during the time of Cain before the flood. Let me tell you all folks, this thing is way deeper than you think it is. It's, it's clear that in the earth there's only male and female folks. Let's not get anything confused. There's male, and I'm talking about biology here. There's male, female, nothing else. And if we look at this and, 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 uh, and accept what God said, the simplicity of it, we'll be able to do what? Recognize the evil forces working to destroy that concept. Understand that. If we just say, listen, let's Nick, get all this crap off the table with everything you're saying. Let's go back to the beginning, male and female, and let's accept male and female, you know, as the all to end all for life going forward. Mm. Automatically, by that understanding, we as a people can now recognize the dark soldiers that have been initiated to fight against us. Automatically. Mm. But they want to muddy the waters and have and, and have this victimhood type of thing with that initiative so that we can do what? Compromise our stances. And by doing so, by doing so, accept what we would normally reject. Have Nephilim operating amongst us. And here it is. You can have one of them because, folks, this, this is nothing new. There were hermaphrodites during this same time when the angels came to sleep with women, where you would have a full-blown woman running around with a beard. 
running around with a beard. You would have a male, a male walking around who was from the seed of Nephilim, who would have two sexual organs in one as an hermaphrodite. This all came through that genetic scenario that happened before the flood. But back then, we understood, okay, these are the children of the fallen ones. We can totally recognize we need to stay away from them before they taint the righteous gene pool. We, we would recognize them immediately because automatically if you came out different, male or female, you were put in a category of what? The children of Satan. Automatically. Breaking it down for you. So if you allow the Nephilim and their children to operate, now Satan have soldiers, educated show, so, show, uh, soldiers, political soldiers, religious soldiers in high places to push Satan's agenda against who threatens them, the children of light. Namely, the children of Israel and also the Gentiles who believe in Christ. Let's read it again, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Second Peter 2 and 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, Come on. but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spare it not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. The Most High sent a flood because of everything we are experiencing on earth right now. Everything we're witnessing. Because it, it, it isn't about them just living to let live, folks. That's not their focus. Their focus is to destroy anything good on earth who oppose their God. That's their true initiative. And hence, God had to send a flood. Hence, Christ is going to have to come back early before the 6,000 years are finished. Or no flesh would be saved. Matthew 24 and 22 tells us this. Because Satan knows exactly how much time he has. Let's go, let's go to the book of Revelation 9 now. Yes, sir, from the top. Let me get it. Let me get it up here. paper I had it written down here it is I have it here Revelations 9 and a matter of fact let me pull that up so that so that all can see Revelation 9, hold on, let me get it here. Revelation 9, and wait till you see how this comes together. <laughs> it's deep. Hit the like button, hit the like button. We're going to come right back in one, one minute and 20 seconds with part two. The truth about good and evil. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but 
it seems as if mad makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Okay, part two in one second. And while, uh, while lawyer fouls in, hey, let's get ready for the, uh, the explanation point, the crescendo on this particular lesson, going into the book of Revelation with the truth about good and evil, right? We're going to go into understanding, brothers and sisters, where it says the gates of hell, hell where the fallen angels are bound. A lot of y'all don't know this, but folks, a lot of this information we're talking isn't just biblical information. Secular or what you would call Mesopotamian legends have proof of these same teachings. A matter of fact, a lot of you probably didn't know that the god Osiris worshipped and upheld within the Egyptian pantheon of gods. A lot of you don't know that Osiris is Azazel. Azazel, the fallen angel that was bound. <clears throat> Hence, this is why all your politicians go into Egypt, like Barack Obama and others. There's a rock slid in place under the Great Pyramid, and that's where Azazel is. He, he, he was renamed Osiris under what? Egyptian myth or folklore. So what we're telling you, folks, isn't just a Bible concept. We're just giving you the true understanding of it all. And see, the people get confused in following these pagan gods and acknowledging them as something righteous because they gave mankind ingenuity, ingenuity and science. Don't forget, on that tree, that tree didn't just have bad stuff. Who's wanted to agree with something just bad? So initially, the so-called gods gave what? Mankind efficiency, made life easier, gave them insight on how metals and all these things operate to make life easier. And it seemed good, but it came with what? A price. So we were like, you see, you see the Egyptologists and all that time, we were, we were gods and we were once great and we had the technology. They don't even understand the trade-off that comes with agreeing with them. Okay? So let's jump in now. Elder Lawyer is here now. Let's go to Revelation 9 and we're going to do this with the Bible with the Bible in the scene here. Great, fantastic. We hear at Revelation, the ninth chapter in the first verse. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Revelation 9 and 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. The key of the bottomless pit. Now, obviously, brothers and sisters, this a key opens or lock. So when it says, when Christ said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, Peter, with this doctrine, obviously something would get released on earth and would strike and harm the unbelievers, right? And at the same time, Christ would shield us or those who believe in this doctrine in Christ from what's coming out of the dark hole. See? So the key is to open something that's coming. Now check this out. Let's read. Revelation 9 and 2. And he opened the bottomless pit. So now the gates are open now, the gates of hell. 
And don't forget, Christ said, Peter, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. So he opened that bottomless pit. Read, and we know what's down there. The fallen angels, the unrighteous, all of that is in this dark realm. Christ tells us in, in, in our Luke, the 16th chapter, about a chasm that's fixed in between where the bosom of Abraham and those who serve righteously on earth are protected in profound quiet, guarded by the heavenly angels. So the righteous are able to look on the other side and see this place of torment made to be judged. Well, that particular area in of itself has a gate. Gate. There's other words for it. Portal. An opening. And a shutting. Right? Come on. Revelation 9 and 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And what? And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. The sun and the air were darkened by reason of the dark of the what? The smoke. The smoke of the pit. Now, obviously, something that happens when this gate is open plays out real time on earth. But, our, but we don't recognize it. We don't realize when death and destruction has come from the dark pit. Right? And they have pushed an initiative against the righteous on earth using governments to destroy, make sick, and to do what? Utterly kill the righteous on earth. Folks, what we're reading in Revelation ninth chapter folks is really what people are ignoring when it comes to uh what they, they would call the depopulation program you don't understand it this is a spiritual war against people and revelation 19 lets us know that this depopulation program came well before these so-called government institutions in place or the Rockefeller foundation or this that and the other that these will be ministers of Satan. What? With information coming from the dark pit to destroy those on earth who could oppose Satan's authority. Anything released from this will be under the orders of Satan. And I'm going to prove that. Read the third verse. Yes, sir. Verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, what, whatever initiative, initiative that's coming out of this pit, folks, utilized by government, we know that it has what? It has the power, is given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. How does the scorpions of the earth have power? Help me all. It sting. It sting. So now the Most High through Christ has given us information of a poison that will be instituted on the earth to sting the people. Now, one thing about the scorpion, right? You can get stung by a scorpion and not die immediately. It depends on how healthy you are. It depends on your immune system. It depends on how, you know, how deadly that particular scorpion is in, within the scorpion family. So you can walk around harmed by the scorpion, poisoned by the scorpion, and not die immediately. I need y'all to check this out, folks. So if the power of whatever they are bringing forth is a sting, being stung with something, then automatically we are to know 
this falls directly into prophecy and that there's an angel attached to it. And there's an angel attached to it under the commands of Satan. Right? Let's read the fourth verse. Yes, sir. Verse four. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So the seal of God is the Holy Spirit, folks. Those who are led by the Holy Spirit would say what to this? No. That seals us to the day of redemption. We're sealed through the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. And the Holy Spirit would put in our conscience, I don't care what reason they give you for the sting. Don't do it. This is an initiative from the dark side. From, from the fallen angel, Abaddon, Apollyon. He was given power under Satan's ranks to kill the majority of people on earth. It was prophesied this would happen. I need y'all to check this out, folks. A ranking angel bound who only knows how to destroy. That's why God bounded him from the beginning. And once he's loose, he's going to bring forth the same initiative that was destroying, killing, and making sick Noah's children. Let's read it. Five. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. That they should not kill them, read. But that they should be tormented five months. So you can have people walking around, harm and all of that, with all types of side effects and sicknesses, living, knowing that something has changed within their genetic makeup. But those who had the Holy Spirit and was guided through the, the Holy Spirit realized, no, nah, I'm not going to be coaxed into an, an, an initiative that will change who I am or utterly destroy me. I'm good. See, the rules of engagements out here, brothers and sisters, is the fact that you have to volunteer for it. So I know, according to God, what this is. Read, other lawyer. Yes, sir. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Read. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. It is the torment of a scorpion. So what, what is John seeing here? The attack is going to be as if a scorpion stung a man. To let us know anything with the sting, what? Reject. See, it doesn't matter how intelligent it might sound, how organized with ingenuity and science it might sound. The ingenuity and the science of it. The Bible says the scorpion, when he strike over the man, a man, is what we need to avoid because it comes out of the gates of hell. So we have to protect our children. We have to protect women. We have to protect people from this strike. Understanding that it was prophesied right after Christ's death and resurrection. He showed this to John on the Isle of Patmos that what we're living under right now, what we're living under right now, folks, would be an initiative under Satan's ministers on earth to kill off the righteous. So that they can do what? Consolidate and hold power, knowing that the children of Israel have next. And guess what, folks? They would politically point this initiative of the scorpion against the children of Israel. They'll say that our people are disproportionately affected and we need it more than anyone else. Why? 
for the same reason they look to circumvent Adam's power. Satan sought to circumvent Adam's power, knowing that what? Esau's dominion will soon come to an end. Now check it out. The sixth verse. Yes, sir. Verse six. And in those days shall men seek death. It says, in those days men shall seek death. Why? Because it's going to destroy their quality of life. They're going to have all types of illnesses. So the people who live are dealing with all types of evil side effects and all that. That, that they weren't dealing with before. So they're going to they're going to give up the will to live. Read and shall not find it. Mm, come on. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And death shall flee from them. Sounds like a walking dead to me. Sounds like a zombie to me. Walking around with no quality of life. A dead man or woman walking because now you are susceptible to what came out of the bottomless pit. Now, how do we know what came out of the bottomless pit? Well, I can take you back to the beginning again in the book of Jubilees when these same spirits were bound to show you what they released on mankind. And you tell me if that's not what the earth is experiencing right now. I know what came out of the bottomless pit because I read when they were bound in the book of Jubilees. So let's go, Elder Lawyer, to the book of Jubilees. Now, before I go to the book of Jubilees, Elder Lawyer, mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that under Judaism, under Judaism, there's a concept to allow evil to fester on earth. Why aren't governments seeking to stop evil if they have the power to do so? Well, there's a such thing as, now look at where I got this from, folks. So you cannot think that this is my interpretation. Chabad.org. Ch Hold up, let me get it. Hold up. Chabad.org is a Jewish site. Jewish practice. So who would be pushing Abaddon and Apollyon's initiative. Go back to Revelations because I need to go back and get that name Apollyon and Abaddon. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Verse number uh, seven. And Verse the, number seven? Uh, you want to get straight to Apollyon? No, let's get to it because I want you to read it all the way through yes, and sir. then I'm going to pull this up. Yes, sir. Verse seven. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Demons, folks, being released on earth. Read. Verse 8. And they had here as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Read. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Read. And they had tails like unto scorpions. They had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings, and there were stings in their tails. And there were stings in their tails. Okay, to poison people. Read. And, and, and you're going to find out the poison either kill or make people sick. Read. And their power was to hurt men five months. Was to hurt men, people. For five months, folks. Here's the purpose of the initiative. Read. 11. And they had a, a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. The angel of the bottomless pit, who was bound, read. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, 
but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Abaddon and in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now we find this same spirit over the dark forces in the book of the Old Testament. Right? Now, elder lawyer, so there's a demon over this initiative, folks. You cannot listen to the people they put in front of you. These are the politicians, the front ministers of the evildoer, of Satan, to convince you into the dark initiative of Apollyon or Abaddon. The spirits have been released on earth already. Let's go to the book of Job 26, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Job 26. Let me get it here. Let me get it so they can see it too. Job 26 and 6. Job 26, verse 6. Hell is naked before him. Hell is naked before him. And destruction hath no covering. And destruction hath no covering. Well, now we're going to find out who's Abaddon or Apollyon in the book of Revelation. I need y'all to see this. The angel that was bound, Abaddon. Abaddon holds the souls of sickness and death, the spirit to destroy people on earth, an angel that was bound. There was 200 that came down during the time of what? Jared. The time of Enoch. It's a spirit in hell, destruction. And when he's let loose, he's put under Satan's rank and is given what? Laboratories and also all types of understanding of science to do Satan's will against those of the disobedient within earth. And the disobedient and those who are not following God are the only ones who are going to fa fall prey to Apollyon or Abaddon. Now there's more. He's all through the scriptures, folks. Let's go now to Job 28, Elder Lawyer, mm -hmm. and 22. Job 28 and 22. Let's go to, I think, 26. Let's see. 22, okay. Uh, Job 28 and 22. There he is again right here. Read. Destruction and death say. We now, how can destruction and death talk? <laughs> Destruction and death say what? We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. It says we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Right? Now who is this destruction in Job 28? Hades or the perishing. Hades or the perishing. It's what comes out of hell. What? Death. Dead. Violent. Pestilence. Ruin. Dead. Death. So this, this is what has been released on earth, folks. After the last war, death was released on earth. And guess what? So was the angel. Abaddon and Apollyon. The initiative he had before Noah prayed to our God has now been released on earth today. And this is why every other commercial you find today is going to talk about sickness, death, healing. Take this or take that because death had been released. When was it released? Okay. There's a last little caveat I'm going to give y'all leading into the academy. The rest, you're going to have to go get it in the academy. But let me show you why they feel justified, speaking of the servants of Satan, to allow sickness and death on earth. Well, under the Jewish 
Shabbat.org under Jewish practice, right here. Under Jewish practice, see that? Let me put it here so you can see it. Under Jewish practice, there's a such thing called Kelapat as Sitra Akra. And what is this? What is this? Check this out, folks. I need y'all to check this out. Let me get it here. I need y'all to check this out. It says, matter of fact, hold on. Let me get it here. It says, God is good and the nature of God to be good. So why did God create evil? Right? Now I need y'all to check this out. Why they allow evil to fester. Under, under Kabbalah, which is the knowledge of good and evil, folks. It says here, in order to earn the reward. So that it should not be with the Zahar called the bread of shame. Or un, unearned reward, God first placed us in an, in an arena of free choice. Where we have to make an effort to choose good over evil. Now that's a lie in of itself. The Most High never created evil. The God Samuel planted the tree. Such choice is rewarded in the world to come, where the souls is divest of physicality and bask in the light of the Shekinah. Now you can hear the Shekinah thing amongst Jewish folklore. It's evil. After honestly earning such rewards during struggles in this world, the creation of evil is therefore a necessity. They're telling us under the Kabbalah Jewish teachings that evil is necessary in order to maintain the arena of free choice. So by, so by this in of itself, folks, they have to push an initiative from the evil side they feel an obligation to create evil as a necessity so that the people in earth will have a choice. <laughs> it's part of their, their, their ideology, folks. So you wonder why cer certain initiatives are being pushed on our children, that's being pushed in society politically, because they feel it's necessary so that people can choose right over what they're doing. That evil is necessary, folks, in order to maintain a balance. Did y'all know that, folks, that that was part of their ideology? Not all of them, but the Kabbalists. Under Jewish mysticism. So now we understand the liberal component of this, CNN and all these other media outlets that would push the progressive evil agenda. You think it's about people being bullied and all that. Nah. It's not got nothing to do with that, folks. They're, they're, they're engineering evil, justifying it so by saying, well, we're going to push the evil so that the people can have a choice to choose good. We're just doing our part. We, they're just pushing evil. It's necessary under their religion. Necessary evil. You remember when you remember when uh <laughs> when Eddie Murphy evil is good. That's what I think. Remember he said that? Evil is good. Remember that? So now let's go to the spirits that were bound that are now released. Elder Lawyer, we're in the book of Jubilees, the 10th chapter, correct? Yes, sir. 
We're going to jump straight to it. All right. It's 10 and 1, right? 10 and, yep. Let's start there. Book of Jubilees, 10, verse 1. And I'm going to show you the spirits that were placed under Abaddon or Apollyon's power. He was just waiting in hell to be released. Now, what happens is when evil ensue on earth to a degree that leads up to its sum like it was before the flood, that's when the Most High told the angel to come down, the fifth angel, and give the key to the openness pit and allow this thing to finish. He, he let those, soul, those spirits release back on earth. And it was the servants of evil who served Satan who would begin to organize on how to administer that darkness on the population. This is why we aren't, we aren't to trust them at all, folks. This is an organized effort under Satan to kill off the children of light. Let's go to the book of Jubilees, the 10th chapter. Let's go. Hold on. Let me, let me pull up so all could see. We're right here. Of course, this is the one that I actually, I was able to get under freedom, under the freedom. I, I got this under the freedom of religion. It's a download that I have that I was able. Now the PDF that I have, I'm, we ain't just, I'm not supposed to allow that. But this one under religious protection I'm going to be able to have this book, and I already checked, I'm going to be able to allow people in our class, the Hebrew Bible Academy, to get the actual reprint of the Sudi Vergrapha Old Testament. So that's one of the caveats I'll be giving out this academy. So look for that. Let's go here to the 10th chapter, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. And let's start in the book of Jubilees, 10 and 1. Yes, sir. Jubilees, 10 and 1. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah. Come on. And to make to err and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and binding and slaying his son's sons. Now what happened right after the uh, flood subsided? The demons who came out of Nephilim, that's right. There's no place in heaven for them. So they have to do what? Those genetic freaks must do what? Live within the air on earth. There's no place for them until judgment. So these were the souls that came from the sons of God and the daughters of men. And they began to attack Noah's children. That's the origin of demonology or demons. This is where evil spirits come from. Freaks. Genetic disorder. OK, it wasn't intended for them to be here. OK, they're not written in the book of life. They're Satan's children. So now they are attacking the sons of Noah after the flood. Read. Uh, three. And he prayed before the Lord, his God, and said. So so Noah prayed before our God and said what? God of, of the spirits of all flesh who has shown mercy. Hold on. Me. Let me get it. Yes, sir. Because I want to blow it up so they can see it, okay? Yep. Uh, right there at the top. Yep. Right here? Yep. So this was the prayer Noah, Noah made to our God after the flood. Yes, sir. Read. God of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me, and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood. Come on. And has not caused me to perish, as thou didst the sons of perdition. For thy grace has been great toward me, and great has been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lift up upon my sons, and let not the wicked spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. Lest they shall destroy them from the earth. So Noah prayed for the safety of his sons, his grandchildren. We were getting attacked right after the flood subsided. Read on the fourth verse. Four. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day, 
And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation. Imprison and hold them fast in the place of condemnation. Sheol, hell. This is the gates of hell, folks, leading to the gates of hell. This is where we read in Revelations Abaddon, in the Greek Apollyon. So Noah begged our God, the God of our fathers, to bound these evil spirits attacking the children. Read. And let them not bring destruc destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God. Come on. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. They were created to destroy. Read. And let them not rule over the spirits of the living, for thou alone canst exercise dominion over them. And it says, let, let them not do what? Rule. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let them, for, it says here, let them not rule over the spirits of the living, for thou alone canst exercise dominion over them. Come on. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and forevermore. Come on. Now, these were the spirits that were making people sick and attacking people before the flood. As Nephilim, folks. Read. And the Lord our God bade us to bind all and the chief of the spirits, Mastema. Mastema, which is the serpent, another name for Satan. All power was given to him. Earth was given into the hand of the wicked. So Satan comes before the heavenly council and says what? Lord creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. Come on. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men, for these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. He says, before my judgment, I have power on earth given through Adam to execute judgment on those who disobey your word. So at least leave some spirits so that I can do my position on earth before my judgment. This is Satan here, folks. Read. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before him. Let the tenth part of them remain before him. So up until our present time, folks, the earth was being ruled by demons under Satan with only 10% of the original number. Now you see why evil has increased? The gates of he heaven is the gates of hell have been opened and now the wreck, the 90% have come out of the river Euphrates like it was prophesied out of the book of Revelation. This is why there's so much chaos, death, destruction and sickness right now. He says, "Give me 10% of them so I can do my will until you judge me." This is Satan right here. Read. And let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. Into the place of condemnation. Sheol, the abyss. The place of destruction. Read. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines. And he and th the angels came to teach Noah all of what? Their medicine. All of the what? All their medicine. All of the medicines, the herbs, because these spirits were getting the population of the earth at that time sick. Side effects. They were harming the people with sickness. So the angels had to teach Noah the remedies to undo the sicknesses that came from what? The demons attacking the earth's population. See? Medicines are the herbs of the earth, folks. They tricked us. That's right. Satan appears as the angel of light. They tricked us into believing what make us sick is what's good for us. Any two times something tell you that you go, something's going to go wrong if you take it. There's no side effects for what the Most High gave Noah. Read. It says, And one of us he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines, and he knew 
that they would not walk for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness. Come on. Nor strive in righteousness. And we did according to all his works, all the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation. We bound in the place of condemnation. These are the spirits that's released in Revelations 9 to sting men who don't have the mark of the Holy Spirit in them. They're disobedient. So obviously they're going to fall with Satan. For what any campaign Satan rolls out anyway. They're disobedient. But those who are still with the most high is going to say, well, no, no, nah, that's not for us. No, I don't care how you package it. No. And now you have so many people walking with regret today, giving themselves over, over to these satanic demons. Evil, evil ones, we bound for the place of condemnation, the bottomless pit. Read. It says here. Uh, which verse? And a tenth part. And a tenth part. Let's see here. Twelve. Verse twelve. Now, matter of fact, go to after medicine. Thus the evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. Thirteen. The middle of thirteen. Ten and thirteen. All right. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines, for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness, nor strive in righteousness. Come on. And we did according to all his words, all the evil malignant ones we bound in the place of condemnation. Come on. And a tenth part of them we left that they might be subject before Satan on the earth. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases together. Read that again. Verse uh, verse number 12. And we explained to Noah all their medicines. All their medicines. Of their diseases. Of their diseases. Because they were, they were diseasing the people, folks. They were creating diseases to weaken the population. Sounds familiar? Read. Together with their seductions, how he might heal them. With the herbs of the earth. Hold up. What was the medicines at this time? How he might heal them with the herbs of the earth. With the what? With the herbs of the earth. With the herbs of the earth. That's medicine according to God. So he gave a book. On how to do what? Heal those who are getting attacked through diseases. Understand this. Disease was a plan to kill and destroy mankind, to, to make them su subject, su subjected, obedient servants and citizens under Satan. Read. And Noah wrote down all things in a book. In a book. And I have a lot of this information. Read. As we instructed him concerning every kind of medicine. Every kind of medicine. There's an herb to heal anything within the temple of God. There's an herb for it. Read. Excuse me. Thus the evil spirits were precluded from hurting the sons of Noah. So the Most High bounded them to preclude them from hurting the sons of Noah. And these are the same spirits that have now been released under the river Euphrates. The seal have been broken on that one. And when the spirits came to this earth, they were put back under Satan and Satan was able to sit down and organize with all the governments to initiate the locusts and the stings on the population of the earth. Depopulation. And only those who are guided through the Holy Spirit can understand this and avoid it. That's one step of understanding good, the truth of good and evil. Folks, the reality of it is in order for evil to overtake any of us, any of you, we or you must be in agreement with it. But under Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit or seal and, and, and thereby able to avoid Satan's sting. St. John 8 and 32, and that concludes our broadcast, our lesson for today. A lot of meat, but I'll, listen, 
this was just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to finish this up in a couple of weeks in our Hebrew and Bible Academy. And I hope you all are there. The concept is strictly going to be the light against the darkness. And this was just a microcosm of what you'll experience in a couple of weeks. Let's read it. St. John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the what? And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. You should know it now. And what? And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free, folks. Folks, the greatest answer in our times, in our times today, to Satan's evil initiatives is what? No. <laughs> With that, shalom, as you can see right there is how you can support the church. If, if, if uh, you've been enlightened with any of our broadcasts Wednesday up until this Sabbath, you can support us personally if you have cash app by going to dollar sign, GOCC 144 donate. That goes directly, strictly for the broadcast here. We really appreciate it. If you don't have cash app, you can actually go to gatheringofchrist.org. And there's many ways you can contribute to these broadcasts, okay? Uh, it, it, there's many ways you can do so. Go to Gathering Christ Church or gatheringofchrist.org and please support the efforts of the, of the ministers and teachers here, the elders of the Gathering of Christ Church, so that we can go into more information and, and, and above all, prepare for what's to come while there's still time. So, a lot of this cannot, wouldn't be possible if you didn't support us. So please support this church, support this work with the most I've given us. There's nothing like what we're doing on earth that I've seen so far, as far as uh, diving into information and making sure brothers and sisters get what they need real time. Okay. Being prophetically guided from week to week. This is our, our lot. This is our position as servants under the almighty and we appreciate all you do to support this church. Again, go to historytimes.org if you want to be in the academy. Please go and also become a part of our network, our social media network. You can sign in by going to gatheringofchrist.org. And that way you will find us on Twitter and all these other places while the time is running short. Okay. It gives us time to get to so many people in such a short amount of time. So we're on every, almost every social media platform that's named with, with an effort to do what? Bring forth this gospel to seal the elect in, in these last days, okay? To seal the elect. And please order our calendar. Go there and order our calendar. And guess what I also found out, brothers and sisters, is that we do have room for the Passover. Uh, we have about one or 200 seats still available for some reason. So if you are a part of the church or you've been newly baptized or you're in an area you've been baptized that don't have a locale, send us an email to gathering as one at AOL.com. Send us an email. If you'd like to go to the Passover, we're going to sit down. We have a play theme. The theme this year is Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden. You don't want to miss that. We're going to have music, a, a night of music all night, Friday night for communion, leading into the Passover Saturday morning. It's going to be two and a half days of, of straight worship and understanding the truth according to God. And I hope, I hope to meet a lot of you in Cleveland there in a couple of weeks, okay? It's two weeks from now. We'll, we will be in Cleveland for the Lord's Passover. With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the Most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. And keep in mind, we will soon see Zion. And I will be back next week with the Patreon, a short Patreon for those. Uh, I know you missed me yesterday, but don't worry about it. I hope what we did today can, you know, have given you enough food that you can digest to give us a little break from Patreon until I'm back. I have to digress a little bit. But all in all, we will be back with Patreon with more content there very soon. With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the Most High be with you. We love you. 
And keep in mind, we're the children of Israel in the name of Christ. And folks, we're back. <laughs> yes, we will soon see Zion. Shalom. Shalom. Please don't.